players start playing beyond beyond potential because winning is it's all of you know is a fantastic thing, right? So if you have the option between winning and not winning, you're going to give that little inch extra, and that's uh, that's very often what what uh, people are looking for. Can you back your players enough? For every slide, the contrary will be true as well. If you are not part of a winning team, and I've I've just seen a very very talented side not win. I mean, you don't suddenly go from being a talented side to an ordinary side in the space of two weeks. Your talent doesn't disappear. The ability always stays. But these two things vanish. Suddenly, most of those Indian boys in South Africa at the moment, their potential has not diminished. But because they are part of a side that's losing, they're starting to think, shit, you're not good enough. And if you start to think, I'm not good enough, then your confidence and potential goes down. And therefore, if like you're in this room, if you're in a winning side, you're constantly boosting your own confidence in yourself because you're seeing winning all the time. If you see it once in a couple of years, believe me, all of you would have been different. You would have been in a hardware store this afternoon. What else? You learn from other winners and you know how to win. It's an interesting line that knowing how to win. I mean, you think that, what's the big deal, knowing how to win, right? I remember being much younger and the world was happier. When you're younger, the world's happier. And around the time of the 1986 Football World Cup, I read a line from Michel Platini, who was this French legend, legendary football player, and he said, the team that wins the World Cup is the team that, that will know how to win. And I said, wow, man. And I said, would you ever know that, I mean, if you know how to win, you'll win, right? And, but as things went along, and as I observed more and more about sport, I genuinely believe that there are people who know how to win, and there are people who do not know how to win. If you're used to winning, you're following a certain path. Take, a, take the example of a young kid like say Michael Clark who came into the Australian team a couple of years ago. Look who he's playing with. He's playing with a Ponting, he's playing with a Vaughan, he's playing with a McGrath, he's playing with a Hayden. He's, he played a little bit in, in one day cricket early on with a Steve Vaughan. He's playing with people who are thinking about winning all the time. So he's going to grow much faster. You learn from other winners all the time. But if you don't, if you're not winning all the time, then winning becomes an alien concept to you. And that's why it's important to keep growing in a winning team all the time. Are there a lot of people from Bangladesh here? Because I want to tell a story about Bangladesh and good faith. So I just thought I'll tell you about the good faith bit before I tell the story. There's a young kid in playing cricket in Bangladesh called Mohammad Ashraful. He's just been dropped from the Bangladesh side and brought back. I saw him score a test century and I said, wow, this guy must be among the rarest talents in the cricket world. He could, he could do unbelievable things. But what side is he playing in? So how will he know what it is to win? Who is he learning from? He's learning from people who've never won. Those are the people around him. And that's why a lot of you in this room are very lucky because even those of you who are young in this HSBC family are working with people who know how to win. And that's, that's very important. I mean, I remember in April this year, we were all in Dhaka and Chittagong watching Australia play Bangladesh. Australia had come straight from South Africa. Where for the benefit of all the South Africans in this room, I will state that they could not defend 434 runs. Yeah. I was completely tired at the end of the first day. Bangladesh were 350 for four. The most surprised people were the Bangladeshi themselves. <laughs> it's not going to happen. But what was interesting was at the end of the day at the press conference, Habibul Bashar, who was the Bangladesh captain, said, another 100 runs and we will be safe. He's trying to figure out how not to lose because that's in his DNA. His first objective is not losing. Next day, Australia 90 for 6, finished the day 140 for 6. And Adam Gilchrist said at the press conference at the end, uh, at the end of the day, he was a not out batsman. He said, Ah, Mike, you're a bit of a pursuit here, Mike. Got to figure out how to win from here. 140 for 6, chasing 400, he's thinking of where to win. 350 for 4, they're thinking how to be safe. Now you know why you need to be in a winning side. If Bangladesh had won that test match, as they should have, the next time they would have said, right, how can we win it from here? Because they've tasted success. And so for a lot of you who've tasted success, the idea of tasting success is to say, right, how can I win from here? Rather than saying, mm, how can I be safe? How can I not lose? That's the difference between being part of a winning team and being part of a team that doesn't win. It's your outlook in life. Very often, when you start to say, maybe we can win, that's the first step towards winning. A few Sri Lankans here, I notice. Yes. Yes. What, how did the Sri Lankan turnaround happen? If you look at Sri Lankan cricket through the late 80s, early 90s, 
Sri Lanka always got into winning positions and froze. Got into winning positions and froze until one captain took them along to win. And then they started to win. So, if you're winning here, enjoy the addiction. And come back and win again. So what are these cornerstones of winning? We put together a few points that winning teams are very good at. Heard this word before? I suspect you would. I suspect you wouldn't have heard most of the words that are going to come anyway. So what do we know about, about innovation? Good teams are always searching for new opportunities to create new challenges because unless you presented the new challenge, unless you search for new opportunities, you're going, there's going to be a bit of sameness to you. And that is why they reduce predictability. If you don't innovate, if you keep doing the same thing all the time, we say, right, my new ball bowler is going to bowl six overs here, and six overs here, next ball is going to bowl four, everyone knows what's coming. I mean, when we were playing cricket at school, we had a captain who said, okay, you're bowling first two, you're bowling first two, and he turned to me and said, you're bowling the ninth over. It didn't matter what stage the match was in. If you don't innovate, if you don't have something new to offer all the time, then you become predictable. Good teams are always reducing predictability. Either that, or they're just too good at what they're doing. Which is not a bad state of affairs to be in. Winners are always prepared. Really surprised, because winners have created alternate scenarios in their mind. They're ready with many scenarios. They're always prepared. I mean, I remember the first time that uh, Shane Vaughan came to play in India. He came to India in 1998, and there was this big thing about Vaughan versus Tendulkar at that time. Sachin was at his peak. Vaughan was not bowling too badly either. And in the game before the first test in Chennai, they played a, a side game against Bombay, and Sachin chose to play that game. And at the end of the game, where Vaughan got collared a little bit, I'm saying a little bit out of respect for a great performer. He got hit round a bit on us in face. Sachin said, he didn't bowl a single ball round the wicket to me. Not one ball came round the wicket to me. Maybe that's what he's going to do in the test match. And so he went to Chennai three or four days earlier and uh, trained at the MRF Academy with a magnificent Indian spin bowler who had finished playing called Sivarama Krishnan, who now does a bit of commentary as well. And he scuffed up an area outside next time and said, this is where he's going to go around the wicket to me and play that way for two or three days. And sure as ever, in the second innings, when Australia having a big lead, if Vaughan had got Tendulkar out at that point, the game was over. And sure as ever, he came in and bowled round the wickets at Tendulkar. And the defining moment of that series was that ball that he bowled round the wicket and was last seen going outside the stadium over mid-wicket. If you're prepared, then you know what to do in certain situations. And great players are always prepared. It's not that they're throwing talent at you. Great players are always prepared. Winners always prepared. And they're uh, rarely surprised. And therefore, they're ready to respond. Because they've worked out these scenarios in their mind and they know what's, uh, what's likely to come.